Christine, we can begin, can we? Yes, please. Okay. So, remember, we, we have no particular position for the meditation. If there's cushions, we sit on cushions. If chairs, sit on chairs. Nothing else, you can sit on the floor, stand, lie down, makes no difference at all, really. Because there's... So we have cushions, so we sit on them. So we'll just begin, and um, most of the people here know our basic meditation. Actually, basic doesn't mean low level, it just means, it means the, like the central method, and then there's some extra things people can do according to their individual nature. But basically we do something associated with the lower dantian, let's see, like the etheric energy world, something with the middle dantian, Chung Dantian, the, associated with the deep emotional, as we call it, and something with the Shang Dantian, and sometimes we do something beyond that. But um, the, the earliest things are the most important, up to the Chung Dantian is the most important. And then after that is, um, after that is more for people who've done it for a much longer time. But everybody can try it anyway. So we'll just begin. So you can do the first part with the eyes open or the eyes closed. If you have them open, you just look at some fixed point that's not going to move around. Because when the visual field changes, it activates the brain. If, if your eyes are closed or the visual field is fixed, then the brain processing drops right down by a large amount. So, and, and I can add that for the first 10 years. The first 10 years, I, I always did it with the eyes open because that's what my first teacher taught, and then later on I did it with the eyes closed. It really makes no difference. You can do both. I do it with the eyes closed now. So we begin. Breathe in as deeply as you can. And just take the mind up through the top of the head. Keep breathing in. And then breathe out slowly. Bring the mind back into the head and just turn off the brain as if you're going to sleep very slightly. If you do that correctly, you'll feel the whole body begin to relax. Flow down. You feel yourself press onto the cushion. And you listen quietly into the room. So you just listen for whatever sounds you hear. You let the mind expand a little bit more. So you try and listen out around the room. So I'm not sure where the music's coming from. It's not in this room, is it? No. Okay, so we hear, hear the music and the slamming of the doors and so on. It's just this is the quiet external mind, quiet brain consciousness listening into the world. And then bring the mind back inside. Breathe in as deeply as you can, a second time. Take the mind up through the top of the head. Keep breathing in. And as you breathe out slowly, you concentrate inside the head and turn off the nervous system so you feel like going to sleep slightly. You should feel the whole body relax, sink, press into the cushion. You listen quietly in the room. And you extend that listening a little bit further. Out to the range of, if the eyes were open, the distant visual field. Ears fully open, you listen into the distance. And the second time, this, this time, pull the mind slowly back inside. Just withdraw the mind from out around the room. Slowly pull it back in towards the lower dantian. As you do that, you just forget the outer world. And as you approach the lower dantian, you start to let the sense of the body slip away. So it feels like you're falling very, very deep inside. And you forget the body a little. You just fall away as if you're going very, very deeply inside. To reach a distant, peaceful place. It's a disconnection of the mind from the outer world to some degree. In the third time, breathe in as deeply as you can. Take the mind slowly back up through the body, up through the top of the head. Keep breathing in. Then breathe out slowly inside the head. Go to sleep. Inside the body, relax and sink. Feel the pressure. Listen quietly in the room and into the... Out around the room. Are you trying to pick up the very distant sounds? Pull the mind slowly back from the outer world. As you do, forget the outer world. You sink deeper inside yourself as you approach the lower dantian. Start to forget the body. And then just fall away deeply inside. You can either feel as if the outer world is receding, or you're falling a long way away from the outer world. When it feels like you can't really sink any deeper, Concentrate very strongly into the hands and the feet. So you start to feel, start to feel a slight tingling sensation, 
the fullness as if the hands are swelling up and the slight warmth in the hands and the feet. You maintain the gentle breathing in the background and each out breath sink a little deeper and concentrate more strongly into the hands and the feet as if you're pushing something into them. So you want to push a little energy into the hands and the feet and the tingling fullness warmth become a little stronger. Then let especially the fullness and warmth move into the wrists and the ankles. Listening for that thick warm sensation, take the mind slowly up through the lower legs, slowly up through the lower arms. Take the mind up through the knees and through the elbows. Aim to bring the mind simultaneously in the forelimbs. Take the mind slowly up through the upper legs, slowly up through the upper arms. Should feel like a thick warm sensation is spreading up in and around the arms and legs. <coughs> Bring that thick warm sensation towards the hip joints and towards the shoulders. And just for a moment listen back into the four limbs. You should feel a sense of fullness and warmth filling and surrounding the arms and the legs. You should feel like they are immersed in a thick warm sensation. And then from the shoulders, bring the mind with that thick warm sensation slowly up around the neck. The thick warm sensation spreads up around the head. Concentrate into that thick warm sensation around the head and then use a slight intention to pull it down. As if you're pulling it out of the head. Pull it down through the neck. Pull it down into the chest. The breathing's forgotten in the background. Pull that thick warm sensation slowly down through the trunk. Just listening as deeply as you can, you move the mind down towards the lower dantian, through the lower dantian, and right down to the perineum, the base of the lower dantian. Then you take another gentle breath, breathe in. And when you breathe out, just for a moment forget everything. And let yourself fall away deeply inside once more. So we let go of that level and we look for something new. When you feel like you can't sink any deeper inside yourself, concentrate on a cloud of light, warmth and awareness in and around the perineum, a cloud that extends about one fist in all directions, four inches. So concentrate the mind very strongly towards the base centre. Find a cloud of energy so you can sense it as light, warmth, fullness, awareness. These are all like an outer manifestation of the energy itself. Concentrate the mind strongly into, in and around the base center. And then we'll begin the eight, we'll just do the microcosmic orbit, because I'm not sure what people know. So from the perineum, breathe in and pull a stream of light slowly round to the base of the spine. Continue to breathe in and pull that stream of light slowly up through the spine. The light can fill and surround the spine. Pull it up between the shoulder blades, pull it right through the back of the neck into the top of the head. You can go through the brain. And then breathe out and let the light flow down the front of the face. Now you can let the breath, breath become natural. Take the mind down the front of the throat, front of the chest. As the breathing's forgotten, the mind sinks a little deeper. Take the light down the front of the abdomen and back to the base centre. So this is the first two of the eight parts. These are the two most important ones, along with the chomba. Concentrate back in the cloud of light in and around the base center. So we'll repeat that one. When you're ready, breathe in from the perineum. Pull a stream of light round to the tailbone. Wailu. Pull that stream of light strongly in and around the spine. Slowly up, passing between the shoulder blades. That's the second gate. Through the third gate in the back of the neck to the top of the head. And then breathe out, let the light flow down the front of the face. Now the mind sinks deeper. The light becomes a little stronger. The breathing's forgotten down the front of the chest. You listen very, very quietly as you move down the front of the stomach, abdomen. There's a gentle fullness and warmth in behind the light. Return the mind to the base centre. Concentrate strongly in this cloud of light. Just keep, keep concentrating in that cloud of light. So once we find some awareness on a certain level, like into the body's energy field, 
then we start to use intention on that level. So you can learn how to, how to operate on that level. And the intelligence or understanding grows as a consequence. In this case, we're driving the energy into the central nervous system. We drive the body's energy to concentrate in the central nervous system for the health of the central nervous system. So con keep concentrating in the cloud of light in and around the base center. Direct the mind strongly into that. The third time, breathe in with quite a strong intention as if you're really pulling something round, bring the mind round to the base of the spine. Bring the mind strongly up in and around the spine. So you don't have to see the light clearly, but you have a deep sense of something rising in and around the spine through the back of the neck to the top of the head. And then breathe out and take the light down the front of the face. Things like that in the background shouldn't even affect you at all. This is nothing. Take the mind down the front of the throat. Take the mind down the front of the chest. The breathing's forgotten. The mind sinks a little deeper. The light grows a little stronger. You can sense some reaction of the body, fullness and warmth, as you move down the front of the abdomen back to the base center. So those two paths, plus the one we're about to use now, that runs from the perineum straight up through the body to the top of the head, and joins the nine clouds are the three most important paths in the body. The rest go out through the arms and the legs, drive the energy into the arms and the legs for the health of the body, but the health of the central nervous system more important. So concentrate once more on the cloud of light in and around the base center. You can use the breathing to sink a little deeper. So each out breath, just go a little to sleep first, and then concentrate more in and around the base center. And then with a very strong in-breath, strong intention and a deep in-breath, breathe in and pull the light slowly up in the very center of the body. The light should just inch its way up, slow, 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 halfway up towards the solar plexus, reaching the solar plexus. And then breathe out and let the light fill the chest. If the mind sinks deeper, put the mind right inside the light inside the chest. So it feels like you go right inside your own chest. That light continues to grow stronger. The sense of the body slips away. The light starts to expand. As the light expands, keep the mind sinking a little deeper. Push the light in all directions till it reaches about one arm's length, above, in front of, side and behind the body. Concentrate deeply in that cloud of light. And then the second time, return the mind quietly to the base center. The mind goes back to the perineum. Concentrate in the cloud of light there. And then with a very deep breath and a strong intention, breathe in and visualize the light rising slowly on the line straight up through the center of the body. Pull the light up to the solar plexus. And then breathe out and let the light expand up to fill the whole of the chest. The mind sinks a little deeper, the light grows stronger. The light starts to expand. It should feel like the body shifts very much into the background. You push the light out to one arm's length. Spread the mind out about one arm's length around the body. This is the Dardantian or the large energy field. Concentrate deeply into that cloud of light. And then the mind can go quietly back to the base center a third time. So take a sin way down the way and take the mind back to the base center. Concentrate in and around the base center with a cloud of light. And the third time, breathe in, just visualize a light begins to, <coughs> begins to rise unstoppably on the central channel, rising slowly past the navel, on towards the solar plexus, <coughs> and then breathe out. When you breathe out, everything relaxes, the mind sinks deeper, the light spreads up to fill the chest. You should fill up to, spread up to fill the jung dan tian, that's from the base of the throat to the solar plexus, armpit to armpit. Concentrate deeply in that cloud of light. The mind should sink a little deeper. That light grows a little stronger. The sense of the body starts to shift into the background. Then use a small intention to push that light into the large, push that light out around the body into the large sphere. And concentrate as deeply as you can out to about one arm's length in all directions. So when you listen deeply inside the body, you mostly hear the deep body sensations, tingling, fullness, warmth. When you listen out to about one fist, four inches, you mostly hear the body's energy field. 
And when you listen from one fist to one span out, there's no body sensations, the body's energy is weak. What you can pick up is the deeper layers of the energy field. That's why we use this large space that surrounds the body. Keep the mind concentrated in that large cloud. And then gently draw the large cloud from all directions, pull it back into the chest. Withdraw the mind from concentrating out until you're concentrating once more in the middle dantian and the jung dantian. <clears throat> Put the mind deeply inside that area. So this is the area we use to make contact with other similar beings. So choose some person you'd like to help or make contact with. So this is usually some person with whom you have a close connection in your outer life. So mother, father, children, partners, etc. <coughs> so choose some person and visualize them very, very clearly out in front of you or where you feel they might be. So you can use where that person is habitually or where you feel it might be at that time. Concentrate on the person very clearly. And then from the centre of the chest, push out a strong stream of light. So from the centre of the chest, push out a strong stream of light. Use a long, strong intention. Because the energy responds to that long, strong intention. And it gives time for a certain help to come from the higher parts. Surround the person with the light. So the intention very clear to increase the connection on the level of the deep emotion. The deeper parts of you can come into help with a clear intention like that one. So surround the person with the light. If you feel it helps, breathe in gently. And when you breathe out, sink a little deeper. And let the light around the person grow stronger. So if your mind wanders off, use the breathing. If you start to slip away into a slightly dreamy state where you can't remember what you're doing, It's from closing down the outer mind too much and not waking up the inner mind enough. You have to remember the person's name. And place the light around them once more and concentrate back into the light. So this is a strong connection with that person or a strengthened connection. You can send out a simple thought, feeling or question. So that will be transmitted out to this part, <coughs> this part of the person. They're usually not conscious of it should send out a thought, feeling or question that relates to a very deep connection with this person. In no way manipulates them, in no way takes advantage of them and so on. A positive thought, a positive feeling, a warm feeling, <coughs> possibly a question. Usually we send out the same thought, feeling or question every day for some time to establish that clear part of the communication. then after no particular time, you can gently withdraw the mind, just quietly back along the connecting light, with no thought of pulling in the energy. Breathe in gently till the light comes into the centre of the chest. Breathe in, then breathe out, let the light in the chest grow stronger. And just for a moment, re-expand it out <coughs> into the large sphere. Put the mind out around the body and listen deeply in the large cloud. We'll do a little more. Condense the large cloud back into the chest. Just pull it in slowly. Mentally withdraw the energy into the chest. Concentrate on the cloud of light from the base of the throat, armpit to armpit, solar plexus. Put the mind deeply inside that cloud of light. And then with a very strong intention, push the cloud of light slowly up through the body so it starts to surround the neck. With a very strong intention, Push the light up so it surrounds the neck and starts to include the head. To the cloud of light fully surrounds the head. Breathe in gently. And when you breathe out, let that light grow much stronger. And then push it into the large sphere. But now with the feeling it's centered on, <coughs> on the head. So driving some energy up into the head will slowly wake up the deep emotional, deep mental part of you. 
as long as you're in a very deep state. If you're in a superficial state, it will just wake up, strengthen the superficial mind. So condense the large cloud back around the head, slowly pull it in. Allow an intense white light to form around the head. You should feel like there's a very bright, warm light around the head. Use quite a strong intention to pull that light slowly back down. So it surrounds the neck. Pull it slowly into the chest till it once again sits, sits in the Jung Dantian. Then breathe in very gently. When you breathe out, let the light from the Jung Dantian intensify and slowly expand in all directions. Out to about one arm's length. Above, front of, behind and around the body. Listen deeply into that cloud of light. So this moment, that's the energy transformation over. It's moved some of the body's energy into the middle dantian, some of that into the upper dantian. This energizes and wakes up these levels to some degree. When you're resting in this slightly energized state, this is the state in which you can try and connect it with your normal life. You try and connect it with your normal life by remembering the difficult events from the past, bringing them in and looking at them in this state. Or you can look a little ahead into the future, see where your life is taking. And as you look at each place where your life's pulling you, you have to sense how, how connected it is with this deeper part of yourself. It's also possible just to range over your daily events, the people you know, the things you're doing. And as you pass each one in your mind, you get some sense of how well it's connected with the inner part and how much it's just the outer part dragging you on. So keep the mind concentrated in this large cloud around the body. Of course, you could have done those things as I was saying. And without losing the sense of that large cloud, concentrate once more on the hands and the feet. So you feel a sense of fullness and warmth, especially in the hands and the feet. When you're tuned into the hands and the feet, spread the mind just over the whole body. So listen through the whole body and after a while you'll start to feel the body as a mass of sensations. When you can feel the sensations throughout the whole body, you look for the heartbeat. If you don't feel it immediately, you know where the heart is. You listen deeply there and the heartbeat will come into your awareness in a few seconds, minutes, days, weeks or longer. When you can feel the heartbeat, you listen for the pulsing of the blood, the pulse in the veins, arteries. F try to find it in the easy places, like perhaps around the heart, perhaps in the arms, perhaps in the temples. When you find it in some easy places, you look for it through the whole body. Then with the pulse, the heartbeat, the body has a mass of sensations. Background sphere of light. This is some of the inner levels energized and woken up. The sounds in the background should be nothing. Then you can slowly open the eyes and we'll stop. So we don't, we don't require quiet, peaceful conditions to do the meditation. Quiet, peaceful conditions are just for the outer mind. If you can find a very deep state, it doesn't matter if people are shouting in the room or running past. It won't make any difference <coughs> to the deeper part of you once it becomes active. So you can use any sounds or difficult conditions as both a test of your inner state and also mm -hmm. training for the, um, for the inner state. Because when you can concentrate in difficult conditions, that means something stronger inside. Everybody can concentrate in very, very quiet, peaceful conditions. Is there anything you'd like to ask about the meditation? And I might think of something else I had to say. The last thing I suggested, when you, when you get into a good state, so you have some sense of the energy in the sphere, some sense of the energy here, and some sense of the body, because these are three slightly different things, when you find that, then you can try to connect it with your outer life or bring this state 
So looking at the difficult events from the past, you can recall them. Look at where your life's going. And it's possible just to run your mind over the people you know, the things you're doing in your life, and sense that how do, how do they, how well do they match with this inner part of me? Because what happens in people's lives is the outer, the body, the life, you know, the pressures of life all push a person in one way, and you might say the soul doesn't always want to go in exactly the same way, and people go through like this, like life this one. Sometimes it just gets left so far behind that people <coughs> fall away from it. The outer life just goes so much opposite that you can't do anything. But mostly people go through with a pull between them what they really want to do inside and what they're forced to do from, from outer conditions. You have to at least try to sense that inside yourself, somehow harmonize these a little better. But no matter who you are, or what level you reach, you'll always, there'll always be some discord because of the pressures of outer life force certain things out of you that you might not do if you were completely free. Is there anything you want to ask just about that, or shall we stop? Ich wollte nur anbieten, dass es auch möglich ist, auf Deutsch zu fragen. Ich würde das setzen. I'll probably understand if you do. Yeah. Right, there's no, no need to say more then. Um, sometimes when I'm doing the meditation, I, I make some gestures. In this case, there was a camera, so I was indicating some of the things. Some for the people who are doing it with their eyes open in the beginning, then I sometimes gesture what I'm doing as well. Yeah, okay. Can I send uh, the light to an unborn child, <coughs> or maybe not know the name? Because you send out the light in a, um, on the deep emotional level, we'll say, the middle three clouds. This is the level a person goes back to when they die, and the, person, the level a person comes out of when they're reborn. So people exist on that level, whether they're in a body or out of a body. What disappears is the body, and shortly after the etheric level, so the body's energy field will also fade away after a time, and, but the person's left with the deep emotional world. So if you can truly... If the intention is very clear and there's some effect on the deep emotional level, it won't matter whether the person's out of a body or in a body. That means whether they've died or whether they're about to be born. Certainly if they're just leaving a body, and they'll feel it very clearly. So maybe in the first week after dying, the person will feel it 100% clearly. And if the person's coming into a body, so unborn, they're already on the way in then they'll also feel it very, very clearly. You don't have to know the name, you just have to have, um, you just have, to have some way of being clear on who you're sending the light to, and it will go to that person. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, when you say that Okay, we, we usually teach you can send the light to one person or if, if two people are closely connected in themselves, then you can send the light to those two people. Or maybe you've got three children and they're obviously closely connected to you in the same sense, so you can send it to the three children simultaneously. And she's just asking, what about one parent died and one not died? Actually, you, you, can, you can choose for yourself. You should just choose for yourself. Because in all of these things, you have to slowly learn um, to use your own understanding. Yeah. But you should start, start by doing what somebody more experienced tells you. And over a long time, you have to gradually, of course, understand everything for yourself. So it's, sometimes it means a very small amount of experimentation if it's not in any way dangerous. This is obviously a case where you can try them both and then see which one is best for you. You learn something from it. And it's also a case where um, there's probably no exact answer because in different situations it may be different. I say that because in, I can expand on the answer a bit more. 
when people say in a body and a husband and wife, there's obviously quite a strong connection and partners, strong connection on a deep emotional level will form over a long time. But when people go out of a body, um, that connection is not lost. However, there's um, there may be other other connections that are stronger. Put it another way, a person, <laughs> person may go back to another group of people from their partner. It's not guaranteed to go back to the same. So the strength of the connection on a deeper on the deep emotional may be not exactly the same. That might have been just a temporary strong one there, but there's other stronger ones. I give a, a foolish example. If you've been in, in a past life with ten, for t- ten past lives with somebody or a group of people, that's obviously a stronger connection than just say this one life where you happen to be <coughs> together, and you may withdraw back to that group of people. So, in some cases, there will still be a very strong connection. In some cases, the connection will weaken a little bit. So, the, these are individual cases. There's so many individual cases. <coughs> So anything else? Yeah. Um, when you send a thought to, to a person, yeah. how do you experience the reaction? As a feeling, as a thought? Well, if you send a thought to a person, this is on the etheric level, really. Oh, I mean, if you've gone down to the... If you've really got some connection on the deep emotional level, um, let me see... So you actually asked about a thought. If you send a thought out to a person, um, you're likely to get a thought back in response. But um, usually people are not aware on this level. So there's there's almost certainly a response comes from the person, and it's almost certain that you're not really aware of it. That's the situation. Just like you, you reach out to someone physically when they're about this far away, there'll be a response inside their body, but you normally don't feel it. But guaranteed it's happened. They've even tested, this, this is on the lower level of course, they've even been testing it recently, so they blind, some, blindfold someone, block the ears, everything else, no outer senses, and then have some wires on the nervous system, when anybody puts their hand into this sphere about to here, if someone puts their hand, say, in from the back into your sphere, as it comes in, the physical nervous system starts to register a response. So they can measure this with machines. Just as somebody reaches into your energy field, unseen to the normal part of you, the nervous system, the physical nervous system, begins to register a response, and the machines can pick it up. So, and yet the person putting the hand in wouldn't have registered the response. That's what I mean. The person's, res- I'm responding. The person putting the, the hand there hasn't picked it up. When you send out a strong something to another person on whatever level, there'll be a response on a similar level. It's guaranteed, um, but you, you may not pick it up. If somebody's out of the body, like freshly dead or freshly being born, um, without the blocking of the physical brain consciousness, that person will be definitely aware of it. They'll be aware of the, the reaching out and they're aware of their response, even if it's unintentional. Because you can be conscious of something, but it not <coughs> intentional. It's to say there's a response, and then you become aware of it. If you read my book, The Infinite Tao, you'll see some of the examples of that happening with people on the other side of the world. Because these, these are not limited by distance. Some The deeper parts of it are not limited by distance. Christine, can you just tell me the time? Because I know some other guy. Somebody to It's about time to stop, isn't it? We were planning with. Yeah. The dinner's at. Um, afterwards? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I won't be at most of the seminar. I didn't really come to do the seminar on the weekend, but I'll, I'll come in towards the end of tomorrow and towards the end of the next day. 
do the meditation again, take any more questions and so on. Have a little look what you're doing. So we'll stop there. Thanks very much.